one of the most complicated languages in the world to learn. Conversational Navajo is something that anybody can learn. Second group is what I refer to as a trading post Navajo. You learn all of these different items that can be purchased. That would mean two dollars and uh, 32 cents. The one that is actually the most difficult. The ceremonial words of the songs and the prayers and the procedures for ceremony. Those have a language all to themselves and very few Navajo people even today three possibly even four percent know that language. The possibilities of the ceremonial language vanishing from the earth is very likely. <laughs> In the uh, traditional teachings of our people, everything that we are to learn is set out based on a sacred number four. All of our songs and all of our prayers and all of our ceremonial procedures and so on are established based on the sacred number four. Everything else is also based on the sacred number four. And the way that we are told is, is the way our people teach that. Music is based on the sacred number four. Art, the artwork, is also based on the sacred number four. There's only four basic shapes, the triangle, the square, the uh, circle, and the uh, rectangle. Mathematics, there's only four things you can do to a number. You add it, subtract it, multiply it, and divide it, and that's all you can do. And then you get into the human biology. Everything in our physical form is based on the sacred number four. Everything. And so it is with the language of our people as we look at it in the present day that there are ways in that to learn languages. And the language of the Dene, to learn it, is uh, based on a sacred number four as well. Just kind of briefly to let people know that are interested in learning the language of the Dene. First of all, it is considered as one of the most complicated languages in the world to learn, if not the most complicated. It was a language that was used during World War II as a code language. Navajo Marines developed a, a code in the language of our people, and it's a code that's never been broken. But it's all based on the sacred number four. And so today, if you wish to tackle a language and learn it, you have to start at the very first uh, area of learning, and that is the uh, conversational Navajo. You have to be able to greet. Yate, you know, Hashwanilia, what is your name? Hadesanna, where are you from? Hatidone, what clan are you? And these are the type of things you would use in conversational Navajo. It's quite uh, lengthy in lo lots of ways. But conversational Navajo is something that uh, anybody can probably take it, uh, the opportunity to learn. And then the second group is the, uh, what I refer to as the trading post Navajo. Trading Post Navajo, you learn all of these different items that can be purchased and then the amount of money. You know, if you went to the Trading Post, you would ask for something and then you would ask the price and they would say, you know, that would mean two dollars and uh, 30, 32 cents. So the uh, Trading Post Navajo is the second group. The third group is uh, what they use in the uh, various uh, church organizations and the uh, religion type of uh, Navajo, which is that uh, you have the idea that you have to learn about the in God, which is to say God, and then Ya'ash uh, would be a heaven, and uh, sin and forgiveness and those types of uh, words and that that you would learn in the uh, religious aspect of learning the language. And then fourth is the one that is actually probably the most difficult, and that's knowing and learning the ceremonial words, the ceremonial teachings of the songs and the prayers and the procedures for ceremony. Those have a language all to themselves, and very few Navajo people, even today, we we're trying to estimate or guesstimate the percentage of Navajo people that know that particular uh, vocabulary in that category of uh, knowing the very traditional type of language is only about maybe three, possibly even four percent of the people know that language. So it's getting to be to the point of where it's being lost. The uh, place to start is the conversational, then you go to trading post, then you go to religion, and then you go to ceremony. Those are the four areas that you can be learning the language of the Dene. The Nebizad is what it is called, and there are some websites in that that 
can help you get started learning the very rudiments. In most cases, it's conversational Navajo. And uh, sometimes they might throw in a little bit of the uh, trading post Navajo and other times about the religious aspects of the, the language. But very seldom do I ever hear uh, people teaching about the uh, ceremonial uh, type of Navajo. The possibilities of the ceremonial language and that uh, vanishing from the earth is very likely because you have to listen to the songs, you have to listen to the prayers, but when you hear them, you have to be able to understand where it is that it had its origin. It has a history, and the Dene, the old people, put that into the song, put that into the prayer, put that into the ceremony for a certain reason, at a certain time period, and under certain conditions and that. And so, if you don't know the history, if you don't have any idea of the history of the Dene, it's going to be very difficult to preserve the ancient language of the Dene. You have to find people that actually know that. And in our traditional teaching that we make available to uh, people is teachings that you would find in the very traditional, based on ceremonial prayers and uh, songs and that, that uh, we have been able to preserve through the, listening to the old people and how, what they shared with us. And when we pull these uh, information together, there's about uh, 15 or so Dene that uh, concur what we make available to our audience. And uh, very seldomly do we ever talk about things that are negative. Things that are negative are the th discussions about skinwalkers and about giants and those things, things that are just something you could actually learn on your own with speaking to other people that might be willing to share that information. We go higher. We try to rely on the, the highest form of the traditional teachings that we, we are aware of that people have not been able to have access to or not had the opportunity to be told such things. And those are the things that we share and those are the things that we are told. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.